what, what, what was that kind of moment like when you realized your rookie season? You're like, I'm pretty darn good. Because you, were, you weren't even, yeah. you know, Eric Ebron was really yeah. the starter to start yeah. the season. So yeah. what was that kind of process like? You know, I kind of started realizing, like, I started clicking after, like, the Cleveland game, just kind of, the first Cleveland game, just kind of going yeah. into a hostile environment. Like, yeah. experience. that was my first real experience of these fans hate us. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the difference between NFL and college is the fans in college, they're kind of like cheer for their team and don't really talk about anyone yeah. else. But in the NFL, it's like they literally hate me. The number one you know, tight end in the country. Adam Brenneman, tight end, Peter Cliff. And then popped up. Touchdown, Adam Brenneman, a 14-yard strike. What's up, guys? Welcome to episode two of Brenneman Shows Up podcast. I'm Adam Brenneman. We are in Delaware. Going to talk to Pat Fryermuth. We're here because he's visiting his girlfriend. So we met up in Delaware, rented an Airbnb. Going to talk to him here and tell his story. He's one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Going to become the best tight end in the NFL, in my opinion. Let's go see what he's up to. I was about to wear that sweatshirt. What's that? I think I didn't wear that sweatshirt. I was about to wear it. Are you going to wear it? Yeah. <laughs> <We're gonna be laughs> Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. I appreciate it being so easy to set up. You are our second interview, yeah. so it's good to have you on. H had to have a Penn State tight end on Absolutely. soon. You know, I wasn't going to wait long. But you're true. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm second best. Kasiki's third. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, we're in, we're in Delaware right now. Yeah. So we were trying to schedule this thing out, and you're you're visiting your girlfriend in Delaware right now. So, so you you making that trip a lot? Uh, a little bit. This is, yeah. this is I think my second time uh, coming here. So yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad it worked out. Easy sure. easy drive for me. So, so you're from New England, right? So that that's the first thing when I think of you and like what's unique about you. Not many NFL players from New England. Not many big time athletes from from your area. So what was that like kind of growing up in that area and and you know trying to get exposure when you when yeah. you're when you're from New England? Yeah, I mean it was weird just, you know, the whole exposure process in high school and everything like that and I think uh, you know my my cousin my high school coach did a great job kind of yeah. getting me out there and I think it's just big going to camps and stuff like that, just kind of going there and showing out like you did and all that kind of stuff and just going to these different programs just having them catch your attention and stuff like that. So um, just that whole process and um, you know, it's, it's fun, but it's definitely stressful. Yeah. And I think it was a little different, though, because I didn't really have much of resources to bounce my ideas right. off of because there was no one really around. Yeah. yeah. So the first time I heard of your name was I was at UMass, right? And I'm, I'm uh, having, like, my All-American yeah. season. And our offensive line coach, Mike Foley, is your, is your uncle. Yeah. So he comes up to me one day, and he's like, he's like Adam, I, I, my nephew's this tight end. Yeah. He's really good. And of course, like I hear that all the time. People, he's like, would you mind like reaching out to him? And like, I'm sure I never reach out to you. I don't think. <laughs> it's so funny to look back yeah. on it now that you're you're Pat Fryermuth, yeah. the tight end for the Steelers. And I remember you being at a spring game or, or one of the one of the games at UMass, right? You, you remember that at all? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was funny. They all, he called me and my mom because they couldn't call sophomore. That's right. Yeah. So he called my mom. So he put Pat on the phone and he offered me a scholarship. But then he was like. As a coach, I want you to commit, but as an uncle, don't commit. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, you yeah, don't want to go to UMass. Yeah, that's that's what always will stick out in my yeah. mind about that. But that was my first offer. It was cool going from him, and that was that quote that he said will always stick with me about that. So that's it was, great. It was, it, was, it, was, it was funny. Well, let's talk about your recruiting process briefly. Like you, you, you were highly recruited, but you weren't a five star by any means. Like what was what was that process like? Started with UMass, obviously, and then ended with ended with Penn yeah. State. Yeah, it was quick. I mean, I I, I got it over with the summer going to my junior year. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hate the whole social media tweet thing. Yeah. How, how recruiting is now, I hate it all. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I was the quick, freaking videos yeah, and the commitment videos. You didn't do one of those? No, no. <laughs> I posted a picture of the stadium and said committed. So yeah. I, uh, that's what I did, and I, it was easy and simple, and I just wanted to get it done with, and got Penn State, loved yeah. it, and uh, decided to end it like that. You take a lot of visits? No, not really. I mean, I, I took, I visited Syracuse, uh, Penn State, BC, got, UMass, okay. like those kind of local schools. Yeah. Um, that's about it. What, what's like the craziest recruiting story you have? Like anything yeah, wild so, happened? So Penn State, I yeah. was visiting and I mean, I went from Syracuse to Penn State practice yeah. and it was just so different. Um, mm -hmm. like Penn State was just so much bigger and I was standing on the sideline and Naeem Wartman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he came out to me and was like, uh, he's like, what position do you play? I'm like, tight end. And he was like, oh, I, I mess up tight ends. And I'm like, <laughs> all right. And so they walked away and I was like, okay, this is. Yeah. Ridiculous. But yeah, it was, it was cool. It was he was talking shit to the recruits. Oh, yeah. It was funny, but it was, it was cool. 
That's great. How, how much, so Gesicki was a tight end, right, when, at, at Penn State when you get recruited. Did that have a big, like, did, what, what was that relationship like with him? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. I mean, I yeah. went there, and I was, I, I think Coach Ronnie told him that, um, you know, I was thinking about committing, and, and, yeah. and, you know, Mike took me around campus and showed me around all the frats where he was. <laughs> yeah. and all you didn't go to any of the frats, did you? Yeah. <laughs> He was all the, the P-Man, all the places, yeah. and showed me where he lived and all that kind of stuff, what they did, and took me to train table and meet the guys. So, I mean, he yeah. was awesome. And, you know, that experience with Mike kind of helped me, you know, solidify my decision that I want to go yeah. to Penn State just because, you know, the whole team was great, and he was a great guy. So like that. If, if Mike took you to P-Man's, I'm assuming his shirt came off there and everything, oh, right? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so when, when, when you got to Penn State, what was kind of like your you know, development process? Like, where, did you feel like you were really behind the curve when you got there? Or do you feel like you were like coming from Massachusetts yeah. to play, you know, to, or from the New England area to play at, at big time division one football? Did you yeah. feel kind of behind the curve? I think it was a little different just cause you know, I did a, a fifth year of high school. Yeah. So, you know, True. I had yeah. extra year of development that, yeah. um, but I came in and I kind of wanted to come in and show that like, you know, I was physical so I could go out there and block. So. I mean, I let the passing stuff come later on mm -hmm. in my in my role. Yeah. Um, I just kind of went out there and just tried to be a good blocker as I can be. And you know, obviously it sucked for them, but I think injuries help play a part in me mm -hmm. on the field. I mean, obviously yeah. you hate seeing Nick, one of my best friends, Bowers, go down yeah. in Hollywood, and, and Danny Dalton you hate seeing him go down. But I think those injuries that kind of stepped up to the occasion and stuff. So, I mean, that's just part of the game and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, so I think, you know, they did a great job kind of preparing me and, and they were great teaching me the offense. Speaking of like being physical, like you didn't learn that from Gesicki at all, right? He, he, he didn't uh, teach you I that? I remember watching the install, watching the install <laughs> tapes about doing like split flow, uh, and yeah. cut off a C B gap, and like whatever he's doing. <laughs> Do the <laughs> opposite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no. everything in the, in the route game, yeah. you know, great guy to follow. No, he's awesome. Yeah. And I, he'll, he's going to watch this and he'll be like texting me. Like, oh, you were text you're me. Talking, yeah, <laughs> what were you doing? Yeah. So in, the interesting thing about your recruitment to Penn State, when I think about it too, is people were much more excited to see another tight end come to Penn State, yeah. Zach Coons, who, we're, who we both are, are good friends with, yeah. um, who's now having a ton of success in his sure. career. Sure. But you were kind of like the like the underdog. That's kind of a yeah. story of your career, I feel like. Yeah. But like people weren't expecting you to go in and become the become the man. They were excited about. There was a five star that came in in your class, yeah. and you were kind of. And then what's cool too about your story is you decided to go to Penn State even though they already were bringing in a five-star tight end. So yeah. talk about that process. Yeah, you know, I mean, me and Zach have a great relationship, and, you yeah. know, I love him to death, and, you know, we went through everything together and stuff like that. So I think that, you know, building that relationship in the recruiting process, you know, I, I felt comfortable going, being yeah. able to go to Penn State and obviously competing against some stuff like that, but also knowing that it was no bad blood, you know what I'm saying, whatever yeah. happened. And I think, you know, he was great with me, just kind of the success that I had early on and kind of yeah. supporting me and stuff like that. But I think... Um, you know, that's, I kind of always have a chip on my shoulder, just like you said, like, I've never been that guy who is five star and yeah. like, had stuff handed to him, stuff like that. So, you know, just kind of chip on the shoulder and that kind of, that whole kind of underdog mentality I kind of use throughout, you know, my college experience. Yeah. Like Penn State, talk about your, give me your best James Franklin story. Like what, what or, 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 kind of you know, for? any kind of story, you know, I, I just, you know, a lot of people watching this are probably yeah. James Franklin fans and Franklin's meant a lot to my career. I mean, yeah. he's helped me a ton in, in coaching and whether it's coaching or media or anything yeah. I was doing. And I'm sure you guys were close. I yeah. know you were. Yeah, me yeah. and him were really close. I think the one thing that that's stood out to me about Franklin is not, I mean, there's a bunch of stories, but I think the one thing that stood out to me about him and his program is that he cares about the players and the coaches. Yeah. He doesn't just like, he... He says it, and then he doesn't just go to the opposite thing. I think that he really, truly yeah. means what he's saying and, like, what he does. I think, you know, if you follow his process and his steps to be successful in a, as a man yeah. and as a football player, I think you're going to be set up for you know, great success. I think a lot of the greats of Penn State have, have done that, like Mike and Saquon. No doubt, yeah. And, and all those guys, I think they follow that process, and I think um, if you do that, then you're going to be set up for You still remember the four core values? Positive attitude, work ethic, compete everything you do, and must be willing to second. That's the best, isn't it? Uh, I'll never forget those till oh, the day I die. Every single day, every single day you walk in the team room, you have to look at you the, gotta, the yeah. side of the wall. Did he still make you read the quote? Yeah, on the wall, and then just you do ultimate teammates still. Ultimate yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll never forget that Absolutely. stuff, man. I mean, that's good. Just kind of you know hearing yeah. what other. I mean, I mean, I know guys on defense who I wouldn't even would have thought of. Yeah. Who someone else's ultimate teammate and why, and then you kind of gain a different respect. Uh, respect yeah. For them. And it teaches you how to stand up in front of people and exactly. say things with your chest. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, did Franklin ever yell at you at all? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, really? Lines down and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. So soft. You probably tell me you're soft the whole time, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. 
Oh, uh, Franklin's a man. Yeah. No, it was funny. Let's talk about like your your process um, through the combine NFL draft, and I think that's a process that a lot of people are curious about. And you came out of Penn State and really with a lot of hype. You know, everyone was talking about you. You were you were you know super um, highly projected in the draft. So, uh, what was that kind of the training process like for you? And like, what was what was you know something that you were kind of working on during that time? Yeah, mine was very different though because I, I mean, I got surgery on my shoulder. Yeah. Um, so You're I was recovering rehab- from yeah. it. Yeah. I was rehabbing from that, so like I knew from the start I wasn't gonna be able to do a lot of the testing. I tried to do any of the testing really thinking about it now, but um, so it was different. I was just kind of rehabbing my shoulder and making sure you know I, I got my shoulder feeling 100 percent and just making yeah. sure like you know I stay on top of my training like other than my right arm. Yeah. So, um, the one arm, one arm yeah, dumbbell exactly. bench. Yeah. Literally, that's yeah. what I did for probably two or three months of it. And it was different really? because the combat was canceled, so we had to work yeah. Pro that's day. right. It was the COVID time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Um, you know, it's just a different experience than now. But I think that it was good just kind of get acclimated as to like what you have yeah. to go through to be yeah. successful. Oh, that makes sense. When on draft night, when you got the call from yeah. Pittsburgh, was that like was that like where you wanted to go? Were you or you just didn't really you didn't really so care at that point? I didn't or? care. I yeah. really thought I was going to go to Jacksonville. Really, with with Coach Bowen and yeah. I mean, they called me and they were like, "Hey, we're going to draft you at this spot." What spot was that? Four five. Okay. So I. Came but you wanted to go before that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they said the pick was in, and I was like, I think I look at my phone. I didn't get a call from Jacksonville. Like, yeah. So I was like, all right, whatever, and then. I thought I was going to end up at Tennessee at 53, and then they didn't call. I was like, all right, this is ridiculous. So I shut my ringer off, yeah. and my dad went down to get, like, do the recycling or whatever, because I went yeah. to my house, and my phone started buzzing from Pittsburgh, and I, I really thought it was, like, Bowers calling me, <laughs> and it's so, like, I'm being, like, I got a new phone, and yeah. so I answered, and he's like, hey, this is Mike Tom. I'm like, what? And so I was like, oh, it works. So <laughs> That's I great. Get by Pittsburgh. <laughs> why, why didn't Jacksonville take it with 45? I'm happy I didn't go there. I know, but like, well, like, why didn't I? I, don't know, I, I, never, got the, I never got the explanation yeah. from Tebow, but definitely I'm going to go there. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What What was that transition like when you first got to Pittsburgh? And were you was it were you like this is this is where I, this is where I want to be? This is what yeah. this is what it's all made out made out it, to be. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, two and a half hours down from the road from from Penn Easy. State, so yeah. I kind of knew I knew people in Pittsburgh, and you know yeah. I was very familiar with people at Penn State, and so I kind of felt at home already, just kind of being that far away from people that I already trust and, and have who support me and stuff like that. But I mean, I think Coach Tallman, I think I've been very blessed with great coaches in my throughout yeah. my whole career. Yeah. I think Coach Tallman is one of the best like coaches I've ever ever been a mm-hmm. part of. He the way he runs the organization, the way he challenges guys to he doesn't show up and he there's no gray area. Like he doesn't yeah. show up and be like, Oh, we kinda want you to do this, but like if you do it like you know, it's like no, this is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And if you don't do it, you're gonna be unemployed. So I think mm-hmm. that's where guys really respect him is there's no gray area yeah. he expects. No bullshit. Yeah. 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 And, and it's awesome. I think, you know, it, it, I love being part of that organization. Yeah. Your your rookie season. It had a lot of success, seven touchdowns. I mean, yeah. you, you balled out, became kind of, you went from being a Pennsylvania name to now you're really a household name across yeah. the country. And, and you became one of, the, one of the best tight ends in the NFL. What, what, was your, what, what was that kind of moment like when you realized your rookie season? You're like, I'm pretty darn good. Because you, were, you weren't even, you know, Eric Ebron was really the starter to start yeah. the season. So yeah. what was that kind of process like? Yeah, it, it was awesome. I mean, Ebron, I love him. He's awesome. He's yeah. been great to me ever since coming in. There's no kind of jealousy at all. You yeah. know, he always, he took me under his wing and, you know, taught me the offense, stuff like that. Well, he didn't really teach me the offense. <laughs> I won't give him that. I won't give him that. But he, uh, you know, he's awesome. Just kind of supporting me and telling yeah. me, as a vet, you know, you want, you always want to tell. It's good to hear from a vet to what they experience yeah. and what they see and stuff like that. So just being a part of that and, you know, he was great. And, you know, I kind of started realizing, like, I started clicking after, like, the Cleveland game, just kind of, the first Cleveland game, just kind of going yeah. into a hostile environment like yeah. that and experience. That was my first real experience of these fans hate us. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the difference between NFL and college is the fans in college, they're kind of, like, cheer for their team and don't really talk about anyone yeah. else. But in the NFL, it's like, they literally hate you. No doubt, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think it's just... That kind of aspect, I think. I mean, that, that Cleveland game kind of was when it started clicking for me, and it was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah. Speaking of the Cle- Cleveland game, the second Cleveland game, right, yeah. was and it was some adversity, yeah. and that was kind of, you know, watching your watching your season. That was kind of the first like big point of adversity you had in your career with the fumble, you know. Oh, that was a Lions. Game. Oh, Lions game. I'm sorry. Yeah, Lions game. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that was definitely. What tough. was that like? Yeah. It was definitely tough. I mean, that yeah. was. I mean, I was talking to my brother about it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was that was the toughest experience I've ever faced because you know and college and, and high school and even up to that point I've never really been in a situation where you know in my mind that cost us the game yeah um obviously everyone's gonna say there's other plays you could have won it but in my mind that play lost us the game so um 
you know, it was definitely tough just kind of the next couple of days going in the building. But, you know, the guys on the team were great. And, yeah. Uh, Tom was great and stuff like that. But, you know, that was rough. That was definitely one of the experiences where, was, you know, I think back to. And I think for a couple of weeks after that, it was whenever I got the ball, I was very timid. Like, don't fumble. Yeah. Fumble. Like, just go down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, just making sure I learned from that experience and don't let it happen again. But also don't be timid as to yeah. just go out there and play. Like the good part is you had made so many plays exactly. that when, when you make so many plays, like if a bad thing happens here and there, exactly. it's a little better. Exactly. And, and I'm sure I, I remember seeing a clip of Tomlin after the game yeah. saying something like, he probably got asked a question about it, and saying something like, there were a million other chances you guys had yeah. to win that game. Yeah. And it wasn't your fumble that exactly. lost the game for and, you. And that's what he's so great at is, obviously, he talked to me after the game and was like, hey, it, it can't happen. Yeah. Like, you can't fumble the ball like that. But there's a he there's a million other plays in that game where it should have gone this way and it didn't. So, yeah. I mean, it is what it is, but just got to make sure it doesn't happen. For sure. Yeah. What was your favorite moment from the past season? <sighs> I think my favorite moment was... Running out on Ben's last night, I think yeah. Ben was Ben was so good to me, and I think just kind of running out, out, announcing my name, and then being out there for announcing his last name, yeah. or his name, and I think that was the coolest experience that you know I've had this year, just kind of being a part of that whole. I mean, I was a young kid when he was on TV. Yeah, and he's gonna kill me for saying that, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was just cool to be a part of his last season and you know. Like, yeah, I was just gonna ask you about Ben and yeah. kind of like what I knew that knew that you guys were close. I think your locker was like right beside yeah, his, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So. Obviously, like the impact he's had on you, and and you know, just just speak on, on Ben a little bit. Yeah, you know? Ben's awesome. I mean, ever since you know, I remember I got drafted, and then I went out that night, and I yeah. I was hungover. But, yeah. So he called me at like two o'clock in the afternoon. We're gonna have to talk about that night in a second. Yeah. yeah. So he, he called me that two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. I'm asleep, and I wake up to it. I'm like, hello. And he's like, are you sleeping? I'm like, uh, no. And he's like, this is Ben Rosberg. I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I look at my phone. Like, what? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, just from that point on, I think you know we we. Got a really good relationship, just, you know, mm-hmm. inviting over his house to hang out with his family a bunch and, you know, throwing sessions at OTAs and just kind of seeing what he expects and just kind of learning from him throughout all his ups and downs of his career. Just, I think he was great with the moments that I had this year with, like, the fumble and, yeah. and you know, drop pass in Minnesota. Just um, Was that a drop, though? That was a to tough, me, it was a a tough one. To me, it was a I drop. was watching. I remember yeah. that. I was watching to that me, one. it was a drop, but, I mean, <laughs> Harrison Smith. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen to one person. No, no. It's going to happen to Harrison yeah. Smith, did it, but... You know, he was awesome with those experiences and stuff like that. And I, th- I always remember where after that Minnesota game where, you know, obviously I was upset, but he came up to me in my locker and, and sat me down and was like, hey, like, you know, I'm always going to come back to you at that moment. Like, don't you yeah. ever, like, and that, and that always stuck out to me. That's, That's the awesome. kind of guy he is. So, yeah. you know, he, he he's an awesome mentor and an awesome guy to look up to. It had to be surreal, like, your first practice to be out there and, like, yeah. Ben's throwing you passes. Oh, yeah. It was, you got to be like, this yeah, is unbelievable. It was unreal. It was, it was so cool. Yeah. So cool. Does Ben actually practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OTAs, pre, pre- camp. I mean, he has. No, obviously, he's a vet. He gets some. Yeah, what's the NFL too? I was at a pit football practice, seeing Coach Whipple. Yeah. Uh, who we were just talking about, and I and I saw you guys, and yeah. it didn't look like you guys were like walking around. It didn't look like there was a whole lot of. <laughs> Fifteen on, it's a struggle. It, yeah. It's a struggle. So I mean, we we have a lot of walkthroughs, but um, you know, Coach Tom does a great job of making yeah. this work. What what's the comparison to Heath Miller been like for you? Has that has that been something you enjoy, or is it something that you you kind of want people to stop to stop? No, I mean Sorry. Heath is a Pittsburgh yeah. legend. I mean that's, that's awesome to be compared to him, and and but you know obviously as an athlete you can say the same thing. You don't ever like to be compared to someone yeah. because you don't want to either live up to their expectations or model your game after them. I like yeah. to model my game after a couple people, so you know it's obviously cool to have all the experience that Heath had with like the whole booth yeah. and the Heath thing. That's all cool and stuff like that. And he's a Pittsburgh legend, but obviously I want to carve my own name out yeah. in Pittsburgh. I think you're doing a good job of doing that. Yeah, hopefully. Who, who are some of the tight ends that you model your game after or that you at least, yeah. you know, watch a lot of film on? I mean, obviously Heath. I mean, we watched yeah. a lot of film with him this year. They kind of used me in a similar way with him. Yeah. Jesse James, he he's, he's he was good, yeah. especially with his role in Pittsburgh and stuff like that. He he knew he he's like very detailed exactly, in his approach. Exactly, yeah. and, and and I worked out with a couple of times. He's 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 great. Um, and obviously you know the, the basic like Kittle and Gronk and, and yeah. Kelsey and, and I think Mark Andrews. Yeah, I mean I got to know him throughout the year just competing against him. And he's a great guy, and I think that he has a really good kind of work ethic and yeah. just kind of his film and stuff like that. So it's it's awesome. You mentioned the Muth thing when yeah. everyone's you know after you after you have a catch, everyone in the stadium Muth. First of all, how did that start? Yeah. And do you like it? Oh, I love it. It gives me energy. It's, it's <laughs> yeah. cool. Like, whenever I catch a ball, I know I hear it. And it, it makes me run harder. Yeah. Like that. So, it's, I mean, it's awesome. I always want the ball in my hand just to hear it. It started, so when Heath was there, he'd all, people, whenever he cut the ball, would make Heath. Heath, yeah. And so, when I got drafted, everyone started, like, I saw it on Twitter, something like that, like, move with all that kind of stuff. Got and it. And then, like, okay. I caught my first catch in camp, and I heard a little bit of it, but, like, it just kind of started growing up the, the year. And it was, it was, I started hearing it at Way Stadium. It was cool. That was, that was cool. Yeah. But, 
you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's, it's fun. To yeah, because now you can hear it like on TV. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, loud yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. What What's something your rookie season that you look back on and you're like, ah, I didn't. Other than the fumble or like yeah. the drop, like you're like, ah, I didn't do that very well. Or you're, or you're trying to improve on. Uh, I, I think obviously, I mean, you know this. I mean, every tight end is always going to try and improve on blocking. Yeah. I think, um, you know, being able to block at the point of attack. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if that's what they're going to ask me to do this year. Um, but you're yeah. hoping you're like, yeah. flex me out but, a little bit. But if, they, <laughs> but if they are, then I'm always going to get better at that. I'm working at that and stuff like that. So just that and obviously just getting quicker at Tom Brown. Stuff like yeah. That. What, what, uh, was there a big adjustment from college to the NFL and like the blocking part of it? Or, or yeah. I mean, you did a lot of it at Penn State though. Yeah. You were asked to block a yeah. decent amount, but the DNs are a little longer, a little more, a little, yeah. a little the outside linebackers are quicker. I remember, so uh, first preseason game against Philly, first play I went in, I was supposed to cut off the backside C gap. Mm-hmm. And, same stuff I always got caught with in college, crossed my feet and all that kind of yeah. stuff. And Off balance. Yeah. Brandon Graham literally picked me up and yeah. threw me on the ground. And I got a holding penalty. First play of my whole life. <laughs> and I was like, that was a preseason game. But ever since yeah. then, just how quick you have to adapt yeah. uh, is probably the biggest compare, like the difference in NFL. And yeah, college. no, for sure. It's, it's got to be a, a wild transition. Literally. The uh, you mentioned draft night, yep. so so and you, we talked about the phone call a little bit, but like what was you said you had a crazy draft night? Like what what'd you do? Yeah, where, so where, where, where were you? You were so at home? I was in my house. Yeah, my okay. whole family was at my house. Yeah, and obviously it was a little COVID, like COVID still kind of existed. Yeah. So just kept my family at my house, and so we got the call, did a couple of media stuff, and we were drinking with my family stuff like that. And then my boys were at my best friend's house, like 15 minutes away from my house. Mm-hmm. So my sisters. 16 so she wasn't drinking and she drove me and my brother to their house and it was so cool like coming to the house and they're going crazy the prowler, yeah. they're going crazy <laughs> popping champagne balls and everything like that and then yeah. we were all like all right well like let's go into boston so we went to boston and it was that's it was, right. it was crazy it was awesome so I, I bet you have a lot of like boys from home and guys yeah. that have been there with you for yeah. a lot for a lot of the yeah, part I of mean, it. it it just my best friends i mean my friends growing up there, I mean, they've been awesome you yeah know? Bradley, Ryan, Brian, Matt, like they're all, yeah. they're all dope and they're all, you know, they're great. It's guys. cool to have them along for the, the ride, exactly, you know. You know? Yeah. And, and it's awesome to be able to talk to them as in like, they don't look at me as Pat Fry with the football player, like, yeah. like Pat Fry, like, oh, that's just. I'm, the I'm goofy like dude. Yeah, like, I'm an idiot, like I'm still, I'm, I'm still an idiot, so like, yeah. it's just cool to have them like kind of. Yeah, be there with me like that. Yeah, for sure. When uh, when you were drafted, I mean, your life changed overnight yeah. with financially. Yeah. What was uh, what was your first big purchase? I know you got the Rolex, right? <laughs> the Rolly? Yeah, and that was my first big. Actually, see, is I, that I it? Is that it right there? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Uh, I did buy a car, but that but I don't spend my money like that. Yeah, that was, Rolex is the only thing. We gotta dive into the Rolex there. What, what 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 was the car you bought though? What was that? It's just a truck. Just a truck. Okay. But I, I gave it to my dad after the season. I gave it to my dad. Yeah. Um, bought it off gave it to my dad, but that was, I guess that was the biggest purchase I had. I remember seeing people going nuts on Instagram about your Rolex. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be posted online like that. <laughs> the jewelry side too, but hey, yeah, I still. I mean, I don't regret the decision, but yeah. It definitely, I don't need it. Like, how'd you, like, like you gotta give me some context. Like, why, like, when right, did so you just like, were like, I wanna buy a Rolex today? Well, a bunch of, yeah. bunch of guys on the team had it, and Ebron was like, yeah, you look good at stuff. So I was like, all right. You can't listen to Ebron <laughs> on money decisions, dude. So, I mean, yeah, I think yeah. I look good at it, but it's definitely a dumb purchase. It was a dumb purchase, and definitely regret it, but it's cool, it's, I, I, it's cool to have it. Do you wanna give us some numbers of, like, what it cost? <laughs> just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. No, but that, no I, that's, it's funny, because when I saw that, and all your teammates were like posting it and stuff. I was like, that's not really, that's not like the Pat I know, man. Not a Rolex kind of, I thought you'd be like just buying trucks and yeah, like. <laughs> no, it gotta be, everyone has a dumb person. No, 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 but you gotta enjoy it, man. Oh, it's cool. Sure. It's gotta be, it's gotta be like a little, almost like intimidating to like go from, you know, a kid who's in college to like yeah. now you have a signing bonus of like yeah. a few million dollars yeah. and you're making a million bucks a year. And then soon, a few years, you'll be, you know, like you'll be going through what Mike's going through right now, you know? So what, what was it kind of like, was it like, when you first like when the sign bonus hit your account, were you like, oh my god? Yeah, I so I so you sign it, and you have to wait like fifteen days. Or yeah. whatever. Well, that's the Steelers thing. You have to wait like fifteen days, or whatever. And they you like to give it to you in increments, but they like I guess they trusted me and Naj. Your agent wants you to get yeah, that. So yeah. they, like, give it all. So he gave it to me, and I woke up. And it was the fifteenth day, so I woke up at like six a.m. Looked at my phone. And I was like, what? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was unbelievable. But I mean, obviously, you know, blessed me that position. But yeah. I think. I mean, you're in the situation that I am, you have to like kind of help out people. You know what I'm saying? No doubt. Like, yeah. do that stuff, so. so how, like, give me some examples of like what you do to help out people. Yeah, if you don't, so, if, you, yeah, if you're yeah, open so sharing. I'm starting to get into my, so one of my old teammates in high school, he died of leukemia senior year mm-hmm. of, of college. Damn. 
Yeah. And so his mom has a Reed Landry uh, Foundation. Okay. Um, so I'm starting to get involved in that, stuff like that, just kind of do that. And then just kind of just give back to the Pittsburgh community with Special Olympics, stuff like that. You know, I, yeah. I worked with Special Olympics in high school, so just getting kind of involved in the Special Olympics out in Pittsburgh and stuff like that. So That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. We were just talking earlier about, like, the the platform that you have and you don't often realize like how big your platform is to be able to make an impact and like the littlest things because of who you are can mean like the world to somebody else you know well when it comes to like money and finances like are you super in tune with like your investments and things like that or do you have i'm sure you have a team that does yeah i have a team he he's he's awesome but i i I don't really i'm not good with money yeah (laughs) they keep it out of your hands that's why i trust them so i mean we have a a monthly budget and never go over it like make sure i never go over it and so, I mean, he's awesome, and I think that I like to not spend money. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm very easy. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. No, no. And, and especially, like, a New England guy. I spoke like a true New England guy exactly. who saves all his money, right? <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about your family a little bit, because I know they've been important to you. And, like, it's been, it's, we were talking about your boys earlier, but, like, it's got to be sweet for them just to go along this process oh, for sure. you. And I'm sure it's been, like, you know, for, they're almost, like, living vicariously through you. Exactly. You know, what, how, what, what have they meant to you through this whole journey you've been on? Yeah, they've been awesome. I mean, you know, they've been supportive of me ever since high school. Even really at elementary school, I think, you know, they always come to my games. And yeah. They always made sure, like, they would sacrifice their weekends to bring me, my mm-hmm. brother and my sister all over the place and my sister, sister sacrificed, you know, going to hang out with their friends to come to my yeah. games and all that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, just being able to realize how much they sacrifice things to come see us um, and our, our, us play and do all the little things to make it work. I think yeah. that's kind of been the biggest thing for me, just kind of making sure that someone's always there, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So you said you said you, you bought your dad a truck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, he, he enjoy yeah, that? Yeah, he was pumped, he was pumped. <laughs> yeah. What kind of truck, F-150? Yeah. No, nah, uh, uh, Chevy Silverado. Oh, sweet, okay, yeah, even so, better, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, you know, he, he's pumped, um, it was awesome. Yeah. My mom still gives me crap about like not getting her anything yet, but. Yeah, well I was just gonna ask you like, when, like okay, so you sign, you know, in, a, in two, three, what, three years, right? Yeah. You'll, you'll be a free oh, agent, like, and, and you're gonna sign, you know, knock on wood, like yeah. a massive deal. Hopefully. What, what's like, is you gonna retire your, is, like, what, do you have a goal with that? Like, you re- retire yeah. your parents? Is it like something you kind of so, think about? Obviously, I have a goal right now, but so I actually just bought a house back home. Okay. Um, oh, sweet. Okay. So um, it's like getting built right now. See, that's an investment. I asked yeah. you about investments. You don't yeah, even yeah. build a house. Uh, so it's gonna be done in like June. My, my plan is eventually have them sell it and then they'll move into that. House. That's awesome. So that's sweet. eventually my plan. Um, so yeah. That's cool. That's yeah. awesome. When it comes to routes. Like, what's, like, your, when, when they call it in the huddle, you're like, I can't wait to run this route. Why option. Why option, okay. Yeah. Um, so t- talk us through, like, what you're looking for, because I know, but, like, yeah. when it comes to leverage and stuff, I think it'll be cool for people to hear, like, what the Y option is and what you yeah. look for on it. Yeah, so, I, so for us, our rule is work off number th- the third guy inside or outside of you. So from outside in, so you come from that corner. If there's a safety guy, you come from that yeah. corner. So you're either working off a safety inside of you um, or a linebacker inside of you. Mm-hmm. you know, my favorite thing is when there's a linebacker inside of me because it's predominantly going to be too high and he's yeah. gonna be your guy carrying yeah. you. So if he's inside, you're gonna stem at his up field shoulder, take him to 10, and obviously if he's inside, you're gonna break it down at an angle. If it's one high, it's, it's a little more trickier when it's one high, because yeah. you know, they rotate all the places, stuff yep. like that. So, you know, if that yeah, safety's coming down, you work off him, stem him out, try and get his hips flip, like to go up field, that you're mm-hmm. running like a seam, and then just drop it back, snap it back down, so. That's my favorite route to run. I love it. You feel like you've gotten better at like reading coverages and stuff in the NFL? Like, and yeah. are you able to recognize things pre snap? Yeah, you know, based off little keys, I think, you know, I still struggle with like what personnel is out for them. Like, yeah. you know, dime, like, I, st- I still yeah. don't base, I still don't know any of that. But, um, you know, I, I'm starting to pick up on the fly, like, just kind of what put overall scheme of what defense you're trying to do. Yeah. I mean, you know, when it really comes down to it, like, personnel, like, yeah. doesn't affect you all exactly. that much. It's really, like, one high, two high. Exactly. You know, like, who's exactly. who, who's the man over me? The only know? reason, the only way personnel affects me is run game. Because yeah. you're going to have to know the idea. For sure, stuff. yeah. But coverage-wise, it's, if it's linebacker, safety, corner, I mean, the nickel, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Like, who, your guy. Who's the best player you've played against th- this past season? Like who? Like you're thinking? Like he really jacked me up a couple of times, or he couldn't get open. You're, uh, gonna, you're gonna say that never happened, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think Darrell James is a hell, hell of a player. I think it's physical, know, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's he's tough. I think you know you beat him at a break, and then all of a sudden he's his makeup speed is incredible. I think yeah, you know, he's he's really good. I think obviously in the blocking game, Miles Garrett. Yeah, obviously he's a freak. Um, so I think those two guys really obviously stood out to me. I think Darrell James stood out to me a lot just yeah. how he competed. And so did you have like a, a welcome to the NFL moment? Oh yeah, my Where, first play. I was talking about. Before. Yeah, that was, I was. They're just the whole. Yeah, I came off the sideline. It was in Philly. Philly friends. Yeah, football. and they probably know who you are, a lot of them, because yeah. they're Penn State fans. Yeah, you're yeah. just yeah. screaming at you. Yeah, it was, 
I was like, well, I was sure going for Louisville. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. So you uh, you like living in Pittsburgh? I love it. I love it. It's kind of cool it's, it, it, To me, it's similar to where I'm from back in Boston. Just yeah. kind of gritty suburbs. Yeah, blue collar, hard nose. Yeah. Put your hard hat on and work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's something like that. So yeah. it, it, it's good. What, what's the What's the crib like in Pittsburgh? You got a, you got a sweet spot? Uh, it's like a townhouse. It's a townhouse. Yeah. Um, you know, three bedroom bar in the basement. It's nice. Yeah. It's, it's good. It's a good spot. Cool. Who who are some of the the guys on the team that you're like closest with now in, in Pittsburgh? Uh, Gentry, I think the uh, number eighty one. He's a tight end. I'm gotcha. he's like one of my best friends. He's awesome. Um, yeah, I think you know I'm close with uh, Deontay, uh, Chase. I'm pretty close with. Cool. Um, so there's, there's a bunch of good guys on the team. Yeah. Gotcha. When, when you think about like your career uh, a decade from now, because I, I, I think you'll be playing for a long time, yeah. uh, and I, I think you believe that yeah, too, what, what, what kind of do you want to be remembered as or, or known as in 10 years? Like, yeah. is, is, I know you got, probably got big goals. Like, what, what's, you know, what do you think about the future? What do you think of? Yeah, I mean, I think overall in the grand scheme of things, obviously everyone wants to be known as one of the best times to play in the yeah. football, um, National Football League, but obviously that's, you know, I think it's realistic, but I think obviously a lot goes into that. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, just in the Pittsburgh community, just being known as a guy who, you know, always gave it his all to a city and, you know, always, you know, loved where he played and, and where he's, you know, not from, but like yeah. where, he's, where he's building his brand off of. Yeah. You think you'll be in Pittsburgh your whole career? I'm hoping it. I'm hoping yeah. that. You know, I love, like I said, I love organization. I love Coach Tomlin. Um, yeah. Just love everything about it. Yeah. Who, who's your agent? Uh, Kyle McCarthy, from okay. Athletes First. How, what was that process like for you, like picking like, agents? Yeah, it was just like recruiting. I was gonna say, like, was it was it? Yeah, it was easy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's actually funny. So yeah. they so they came and met with me at my house before COVID started. Okay. And they stayed at the hotel in Boston where COVID like explained everything. Like, <laughs> so they called my parents and they're uh-huh. like, "Hey, just want you know, we're at the hotel. We tested negative. So like, they were my agents were like one of the first people to get tested ever in the United States for COVID. Really." Um, Cal, yeah, so, uh, so that's funny. Started yeah. off good. Yeah. yeah, so ever since then, we kind of, we were talking, it was a funny joke, and then all of a sudden I was like, all right, nah, I trust you guys. I mean, they, yeah. have, they have a bunch of great athletes in, in their firm, so like that, so. Uh, are you a little salty that you missed out on the NIL, the name, image, and likeness stuff? Uh, I am, but I'm not. I yeah. mean, I th- obviously it'd be cool to make a couple extra bucks in, in college and stuff like that, but I think, in my honest opinion, I think eventually, I don't know if I'll get backlash from this, I think it's going to ruin college football. Yeah, I, I, think I agree. Netflix. I think it's so it's such a sticky, sticky yeah. situation. I think it's gonna hurt recruiting. It's gonna hurt transfer portals. Gonna hurt. Yeah. It, it. I think it's a mess right now. And I think you know when you open that door, it's gonna it's a door yeah. you can never close. So. For sure, it's funny you say that because I just talked to I told you I was talking to Kenny Pickett yeah. a couple of days ago, and we talked about the whole college football thing and just yeah. like you have coaches who are making insane amounts of yeah. money. I mean, like you know some of the contracts yeah. out there, ten million a year. And then you got the transfer portal where yeah. guys are just leaving and, and then they're getting paid to go to different schools, you know? And it's like, and you're a college football guy, like yeah. you, you feel like pretty strongly against all those, obviously the NIL, yeah. but like, you know, when... Yeah, I think... It, it's a business for everyone yeah. but the players right now. Exactly. You know? And, and, I, and I, I do see that aspect yeah. of it, but like for me, like there's going to be more and more cases of guys that just don't, who have like, don't ever get to their potential because they're so caught up on the wrong things. No doubt, yeah. And I think like me personally, like the guy, kind of guy I am, like I, I just... I like to play football, and it's just an outlet for me to go out and play, and I love the game. So I think when you add these other layers onto it, there's, okay, now I have to worry about, like, getting money. Now I have to worry about, you know, hiring someone. Yeah, and I think guys are going to get into trouble with, like, who they sign with and not reading the contract and it's just to me it's just gonna be a sticky situation yeah yeah i agree it's it's yeah. uh and i just came from it as a coach yeah. you know oh, and it's like it's a it's a the wild wild west like you yeah. just never know what's going on there's yeah. tampering going on oh, within yeah. within guys wow. trying to get guys to transfer but it's wow. crazy uh I want to I want to go back because you know you're a you're a smart guy yeah. and like I want to ask you about like your school process yeah. and you get the, your degree and everything when you're at Penn State like what what was it important to you for the the, the school part when you were there Yeah, I know Franklin important. makes it important. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it was definitely important. I think you know my grandfather was like one of my biggest supporters and yeah, um, you know he made sure that you know I was all like whenever I called him or he talked to me like he made sure I'm always yeah, focused on the school and stuff like that. Um, I left school early, so I don't I don't have my degree, but I'm going back in the summer. I have like yeah. six classes to finish, um, so I'm taking three this summer and three next summer. And 
I promised my family, my mom, and all, yeah. all the people that care about them. That that's uh, that, that's what I was wondering if you're going to yeah. go back and get it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I, hopefully, it's happen in two years. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. That'd yeah. be sweet. Uh, the big the big subject right now around your team is the quarterback situation, yeah. obviously. And uh, you know, I'm not sure what you can say, what you can't yeah. say, but I want to hear your thoughts on like if you have an opinion on like what you want to see happen or what you know. Obviously, you guys got to find a quarterback, or you got Mason Rudolph on roster, who I'm sure you know is yeah. is capable as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we have two really talented quarterbacks. You know, and Mason. And Dwayne, I think they're great guys, and I think they're great leaders, and stuff like that. Um, and I think I'm, I'm comfortable with the two quarterbacks that we have on the roster right now. But I mean, whatever happens, happens. I mean, I'm 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 not gonna say my opinion just because I don't. You know, no doubt. <laughs> um, you know, I, whoever whoever's our quarterback is, I'm gonna obviously root for and yeah. support, and you know, go to war with them. So yeah. you know, I, I have full trust in Mason and Dwayne, and I'm excited to see you know how they compete and. Um, in camp, some of that. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. See if see if they trade up or if they oh, who yes. they who they get in the draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm I'm sure whatever happens, I'm sure you'll be making a phone call as soon as it happens uh, to the quarterback. Yeah. Did you feel like there was a little benefit to that, like having a locker right beside Ben's? Like oh, you were sure, like, for sure. did you ever like get on like, dude, like throw me the ball a little no. more? You probably couldn't, right? He would he would. <laughs> Never would have done that. No, 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 no. No, <laughs> no it was it was obviously it was it was huge just because yeah. like you chemistry know, practice yeah. field and. He's Ben Roethlisberger. It is a little intimidating if you're walking yeah. to the other side of the locker room to go, even how close we're to go across the other side of the locker room and go to his locker room. Yeah. Like, hey. um, but, you know, it, it was cool just kind of having right next to him and, yeah. and being able to talk to him a bit. Is Ben, like, as much of, like, a bro's bro as, like, people say he is? Like, everyone talks about how cool yeah. the dude he is. He's, like, he's, he's, a like, he's, he's a real deal. <laughs> That's all. I've heard so many stories because of uh, Coach Whipple, like, yeah. obviously was Ben's first yeah. quarterback's coach. Yeah. So, um, so I've heard tons of stories about Ben. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah, talks about cool stories. But, uh, Can you tell us like one fun, like that's appropriate, like one one cool Ben story. One cool, I just think I just think how it's cool how he stays so calm in games. Yeah, I think you know one that always stuck out to me is you know we were down a lot. We were down I think thirty against Minnesota. Yeah, and, he, and, and stuff was going bad, and he came mm-hmm. and was like, listen, listen, guys, like I think like he was like he said, listen, guys, we're Pittsburgh Steelers, we don't give up, like we're not we're not we're not quitting. Yeah, and I mean we came back and we we lost, but just the fight that he makes like everyone believes in him and, and everyone trusts him so i think yeah. that's the kind of that, that's probably my coolest thing that's like, oh. yeah no it's uh it, he seems like such a cool dude just yeah. like watching him and stuff sure. another thing i want to ask you was you know you said that there's guys that you look up to in the nfl like a tight end or, or you model, model your game after who do you think right now is the best tight end in the nfl and you can't say yourself i mean me personally i think kelsey just because he's yeah. a run after I think so elusive yeah, yeah. like I mean yeah. just watching film with him like it's just like he takes a six yard stick route and he weaves in uh, defenders yeah. like it's like no one's there so yeah. I think just him just because I mean obviously Kittle can probably block better and he can do yeah. kind of similar stuff as Kelsey can do in the games but I think Kelsey's yard for catch and rack I mean that's what Coach T's gonna say that he always, for sure yeah. Kelsey's gonna crap about that so yeah, um, yeah probably Kelsey are you gonna go to tight end U this, this off season I plan on it yes yeah. you, you weren't there last year right because it was you weren't yeah head. You weren't invited. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I, you weren't I, I don't blame him. I was yeah. like, I don't blame him at all. But yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Can you get me an invite in there too? Maybe I come down. Yeah. Maybe we do a little. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. We can do a little like little podcast, like sit yeah. down with everyone. You know. You know. Is that is that like a? Is it actually like drills and stuff all day, or is it like just like hanging out? What's yeah, it? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's more like hanging out, talking about yeah. stuff like that. I mean, it's kind of drills, and, and you hang, you help out. <laughs> Like yeah. younger kids and stuff I'm sure like there's some off the field activities Absolutely. too. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I want to, and I appreciate all the time you take it, man. But I want to end with um, just a question, and we, we ask every guest yeah. this question. Uh, I asked Kenny last week. You know, anyone who's, who's achieved your level of success, yeah. and obviously you're at a high level, going to get even higher. You, there's like an there's an outside motivation that's yeah. bigger than just yourself. Yeah. And I want to ask you, like, what's your why? Like, what what's the reason that you do it, and that you spend all this time and effort and and dedication yeah. to into doing what you do? Yes, yeah, so my why is my grandfather. I yeah. think you know, just hearing stories about him growing up and what he went through. Um, you know, leaving his house early to go to to the navy and mm-hmm. doing all the sacrifice that he made for my family. I mean, he was he didn't have a lot of money, stuff like that. And I mean, when growing up, when I like, he took all my cousins to like games and baseball parks and, yeah. and all these places, and um, you know, just the experience that he let us have and stuff like that, and you know, he always picked me up from school and bring me to games that my dad was coaching, my brother was playing in. And yeah. He, I mean, he was old, and I mean, he always came to my games and stuff like that. He always came to every single practice of mine and, and basketball and football and everything like that. So just kind of seeing, and he, and he passed away in my sophomore year of, of college. Yeah. So ever since then, just kind of, I mean, he was before, but I think just knowing that he's watching down just kind of motivates me as to, you know, he would always be the first one to tell me, like, you should have done that better. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 
Um, just yeah, he's my why, and just kind of making sure that I always play for him. And stuff like that. That's awesome, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure he's. I'm sure he'd be proud of you, and yeah. he'll be probably <laughs> proud when you're going to be the highest paid tight end in the NFL yeah. in three, four years. Oh, I, I just did a little another show before this, and I was yeah. talking. I, I was saying that I think in you know in a few years that because of like your complete ability to play yeah. the position, you'll end up being one of the highest paid and one of the best, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time, and I appreciate you coming to our Airbnb. Yeah. We had to rent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Too bad we couldn't come into your crib in Pittsburgh, but uh, yeah. but you're going to be a lover boy with your girlfriend <laughs> traveling around to see her. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. Right. Thanks, man. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Brenneman Shows Up. Thanks to Pat Frymuth for taking all that time. It was a great talk. He opened up a little bit. Got to see a behind-the-scenes look of one of the best tight ends in the NFL. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, subscribe on YouTube. we got a lot of cool content coming. And let me know in the comments on Instagram, on TikTok, who you want to see me interview next.